Hi, I'm John Underhill. Welcome to Underhill Creations. In this short video, I want to show you how to demold your clear cast blanks. Uh, using the vertical casting system, we have two blanks. We have a clear cast, tube on blank, and we have a color cast using the uh, black caps on the bottom. So, let's get started. Alright, we're going to choose just two blanks here. That way, we can quickly show you how this gets done. I like to start with a, a pad of paper around the table, and I'll show you why in a few minutes. Now, a few things that you may need, they're optional, uh, channel lock pliers, uh, some uh, medium needle nose pliers, and uh, you're definitely going to need some sort of a extra long uh, needle nose plier. And uh, let me show you how to use these. So in the first blank, what we're dealing with is a tube on clear cast. Uh, this happens to be one of my Amherst feather blanks, but uh, it, this is the same procedure that we would use for any clear cast blank, whether it be uh, stamps or uh, a label of some type. So the first thing you want to do, you want to push on the on this coil. You want to make sure that no resin has leaked out over the top as you were filling this and glued this to the side of your blank. It's not uncommon to get drips that will hit the edge of your, your clear tube here and roll down the edge and uh, you don't want this stuck to the blank, the outside of the blank. If it is, just flex it with your thumb like so and that way when you grab this with your pliers and pull them out, what you get is you keep the shape of your spring, it doesn't get distorted. Now I know accidents happen and sometimes I, I make the same mistake and I, I pull it out before I check and what happens is your, your coil may get stretched out or bent. These are pretty durable uh, they're easily bent back in shape, but uh, for for many many reuses. But for the sake of trying to compose its its figure, you know, it, it's just a quick little check. So the next thing you want to do, uh, sometimes the plugs will stick to your your coil, sometimes they won't. Uh, now this blank was actually uh, poly resin, Silmar 41 poly resin. So uh, what we can do is come up here and squeeze this tube. Just work around the edges here, and what that does is it breaks the resin free from the from the plug, and you're able to just pull it off. Uh, the reason I like the paper is sometimes when the poly resin comes out of the mold, it's going to be a little tacky. When I demold my blanks, I always wait at least an extra day that they're out of the tank. So my blanks will spend 18 to 20 hours in the pressure tank, and then another day outside of the pressure tank so that the tackiness goes away because it's not uncommon for the top of these blanks to get real sticky. They're not fun to demold when they're sticky so let them sit for a day they'll firm up. Now the paper is good for if your plugs come out and they're a little sticky you can just roll them on the edge of the paper and that will take the resin off of the, the plug and stick to the paper and then they're good for next time. Another option is take your pliers and just do this around the edge and that will remove any excess resin. You don't want to damage the, the plug. You don't want to pull it apart. You just want to kind of rub against it to get that, that resin off. Uh, it's not going to hurt to have resin stuck to the tube for next time as long as it's not loose and falling into your cast. So this is ready for another use. The next thing we're going to do, we're going to take the tube and we're going to take a razor blade. And what you want to do is place your razor blade where the resin meets the base. So right here at this point you can see where this tube and resin meet the ed edge of that Delrin base. And what we're going to do is we're going to lay a razor blade along the edge and we're just going to rotate it. Now you don't have to cut real deep. You just want to cut through this plastic and you want to be able to to free it up. Now as you can see here it'll stick a little but but it does come off uh, with Silmar, you can grab it with your hands and pop it off, like so. If I were using uh, Alumilite urethane resin, I may, or, or a epoxy, I may want to take the channel lock pliers and grab the blank, the base like so, and then pop them off. Um, it's a little hard to pull straight off. Sometimes you have to kind of wobble them to break that bond, and then it pops off. Now in the process, if your nail here gets bent, you can easily come in here and just kind of straighten it back out where you need it for next time. Another thing, you're going to get resin buildup around the edge of this of this base. I've been using this base for a few years now, and as you can see, it's 
it's got a little wear and tear on the edge, but it still serves a purpose. With this built-up resin, there's a couple ways. You can pick at it if you want. You can soak it in acetone overnight to clean them up, or you can just take your scissors and just kind of just let them scrape the edge. And then you're good to go. Uh, the last thing what I like to do is I get a cake pan, just a small cake pan, and as I demold my blanks, I like to throw these these bases and the uh, wires. And again, to clean that off, you may get a little resin sticking to it. Just squeeze down on it with pliers, and then it's it's good to go again. I like to throw them in a small cake pan like that. That way, if they are still a little tacky, I know I'm not going to grab those to use them if I'm going to cast today. I'll let them sit another day and the tackiness will dissipate and they'll be good to go this for day two. Now when you're done with your blank, what you're going to have here is a little excess resin on top and bottom. And what you can do is take that to the band saw and cut it off. Leave yourself about an eighth of an inch above and below your tubes. That way you have something to sand or mill off when you're ready to turn them. Now for that bottom tube, real simple. Again, you can pick at it with your fingers if you want. And get them out. What I like to do is take my medium pliers and just break the edges off. You don't want any resin over the top of your plug. If dried resin is overhanging your plug and you go to pop it out, you stand a chance of tearing the silicone plug. Now these plugs, I replace my plugs probably once a year and I do a lot of casting, but I also I try not to mistreat them. So I'll put the pliers in maybe a, an eighth to a quarter of an inch and then just pop them right out. Now this this silicone plug is uh, it's a high heat resistant plug so it's fairly self healing on top so if you look at that you can see I've used this plug several times and it's it kinda holds its composure sticks together really well and again I'll throw that in the pan and let it sit for a day before I reuse them in case there's any tackiness. Now the last blank we're gonna do here is a color cast blank this is a Lumalite white urethane, and what we did is we used the, uh, the clear tube, and we put our, uh, our, our base plug in the bottom. Now, you can grab that with pliers and pop it out if you want, or you can just lightly score around the edge. And what that'll do is, it'll allow that plug to pop out a little easier. Now, it's got a, it's got a small ledge on the bottom here, a little flange it overhangs. You can just grab that with pliers and rock it back and forth. And now the base is out, the bottom blank is exposed, and you have a blank ready to drill and make pens out of. Well, that sums it up. Pretty simple. Not a lot to it. Uh, with time, as you use your casting rack, you'll get pretty quick at it. So uh, enjoy, and uh, check back for more new videos. Thanks.